Last week, I got COVID-19 for the first time, and I had been quarantined in the YouTube studio for five days. But luckily, I'm fine now. So in celebration of my COVID-19 recovery, let's take a look at 19 Obsidian tips that I use extensively almost every single day. If you are new here, my name is Darian, and in this channel, we talk about personal knowledge management and self-development. If you are interested in these topics, please consider subscribe. Instead of using a mouse to go into a link, use a shortcut instead. When the cursor is at the back of the link, press Option or Alternate Enter to go into a link or Command or Control Enter to open a link in another tab. When you want to access a function in Obsidian, you can press Command or Control P or simply pressing Slash. To set up the Slash command, go into Settings by pressing Command or Control Comma, then Core Plugins turn on slash command. You can make the most used commands show up at the top by, in settings, go to the command palette section and select the most used command. The next time when you open the command palette, whether through a shortcut or pressing slash, those commands will be pinned to the top. If you want to browse many notes at the same time, use the stack tab feature. Turn on stack tab option, and when you want to open a new note, press command or control T to open a new tab, and then open a new document using command or control O. You can also use split window function to open another node as a reference. You can split down or split right depending on your preferences. I always split right because I think splitting down is kind of strange. Speaking of referencing, you might want to see backlinks when viewing a document. You can turn on the ability to see backlink in the document without having to open the site panel. All the commands I mentioned so far, whether it is stack tab, split window, view backlinks in documents, as well as other commands can be set with shortcuts. You can freely go into settings and set the shortcut you want. Here are some of the shortcuts I use extensively all the time. In the past, inserting and managing table in Obsidian is cumbersome, but now you can simply create a table through the command palette. I love doing this through the slash command. Add rows using enter, delete rows with backspace, and add column using a button. You can also drag and move the columns and rows around. When you want to augment the content of a note, besides linking to the whole document, you can also link to a block in the document by typing the name of the note and add a caret sign or shift 6. Then search for the phrase that you are looking for. This way, when you hover or click the link, you will only see the most relevant part of the document. If you want to embed a YouTube video or a Twitter post, simply type an exclamation mark, bracket, right arrow, parentheses, and then paste the link to embed the content. Some YouTube videos might not be available due to the content restriction. For embedding tweets, you need to change X to Twitter in order for this to work. You can import highlights from your book summary services like short form using Readwise integration. You need to subscribe to Readwise and install the plugin. I'll leave the link down below for the detailed instructions. I've tried using short form for a couple of weeks now and I absolutely love it. Compared to other services, short form offers the highest quality of the summaries I've seen so far with detail and insights. I use short form to get a gist of the useful insights from the books I'm interested but don't want to read right now. Short form also helps me better summarize the books I've already read. It's like having a friend reading the same book and you learn from his perspectives about the book. If you decide to give short form a try, you can use the link down below to get 20% off and also support this channel. One of the drawbacks of using Obsidian is that when you import an image and then you later delete the link to that image, the file is still there, eating up your hard drive space. I recently found a plugin called File Cleaner that solves this problem. When you run this plugin, it will automatically delete all the files that have no links in your vault. When the image in your Obsidian vault is too big, you can adjust the size by adding a pipe with the number of pixels to make the image smaller. Try 300 first and then going up and down from there. Sometimes you might want to refer to a permanent note or a hub note by many different names. You can use alias to solve this problem. Insert a property and name the alias. In the future, whether you search for the name of the note or the alias, the note will show up. Sometimes you want to link to a note, but you want it to blend in seamlessly with the content on the page. You can simply add a pipe after the note's name and add the text you want to appear on the page. This way, the link is there and blends in beautifully with the content on the page. Outlining is one of the most powerful features in Obsidian. Go to Settings, Editor, 
turn on full heading and full indents. This should already be turned on automatically. And then set shortcuts for toggle full on the current line, move line up, and move line down. This way you can quickly outline ideas, zoom in and out, and structure ideas very quickly. Callout is also one of the most powerful enhancements in Obsidian. Press slash to trigger the command palette and insert a callout. Add the minus sign after the icon to make the callout collapsible. You can also change the icon. See the link down in the description for references of different settings that you can do with the callouts. Emojis can add some fun to your notes. You can use these shortcuts to quickly add emoji anywhere you want. I hope today you got some useful tips and let me know down in the comment section which one is your most favorite. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.